Hey everyone, welcome to The Daily Word. I'm really glad that you've joined me. And for our Daily Word, we're going into John chapter 16 today. And actually, I just, I wanna share the entirety of our scripture with you uh, to read that. And then I'm gonna talk just a bit about what we find there digging in, especially to understand uh, the Holy Spirit and his work in our lives and in our life together in the church. I've told you these things so that you won't abandon your faith. And this goes back into chapter 15 where Jesus is talking about the fact that he will send, he says, the advocate, the spirit of truth. He says now, 16, two, for you will be expelled from the synagogues and the time is coming when those who kill you will think they are doing a holy service for God. This is because they have never known me never known the Father or me. Yes, I'm telling you these things now so that when they happen, you will remember my warning. I didn't tell you earlier because I was going to be with you for a while longer. But now I'm going away to the one who sent me and not one of you is asking where I'm going. Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I don't go away, then I will, if I do go away, rather, excuse me, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. There's so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said the spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. So first of all, I think it's important to point out that the faith is personal. And if it is not personal, it will not last. Jesus says that he's told them these things, told us these things, so that they would not abandon their faith and that we wouldn't either. That mere intellectual assent, thinking that some things are true, will simply not do. Being a cultural Christian will simply not do. A nominal Christian will not do that in fact, we will abandon our faith if it is not personal. It's clear here, first of all, that it's personal because Jesus is walking with them. But as he's approaching his crucifixion and resurrection and then ascension into heaven, he knows that he'll no longer be physically present with them, and yet they will know the presence of God in their lives. God the Holy Spirit will be given to the believers dwell in their hearts. And so we see that salvation is personal, that it's trusting in Jesus, a relationship with him. It's being reconciled to God, again, brought back into relationship. It is to be remade in the image of God as we are in this relationship with him. There's a word here too from the Lord about the Spirit's work in the world, that the world would be convicted by sin of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment by the work of the Holy Spirit. That is to say that the Holy Spirit would show people, number one, that we're made for God, that we've turned away from God, and that we're lost without him, lost without Jesus Christ. And so there's a word here as we're thinking about the Holy Spirit. There's a, there's a word here for us to be careful to sort of stay in our lane to understand our role, that it's actually not our role to convict the world of sin. That in fact, we can't do that, that the Holy Spirit must do that work in our hearts, that our role is to share the gospel, to witness to what Jesus has done. Our role is to glorify God by our good deeds. It is our role to share and to witness. It is the Holy Spirit's role that he would convict of sin, that he would convict of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment, that people might understand the truth of the gospel 
and choose to live in Jesus Christ. Now, there's also a word here, I think, about the Spirit's work in our lives and in our life together in the church, that the Spirit, He would guide us in all truth. They would make the presence and the love and the voice of Jesus real and personal to us. The scripture says here, even the Lord, Lord says that he, he'll tell you about the future and, and not, not in a you know, psychic hotline kind of way. What we're talking about here is dreams and visions for what God wants to do in and through our lives. We're talking here about the apostles and prophets uh, given insight into God's great and many promises telling us what is to come, telling us how God is bringing this, this broken world to a good end in Jesus Christ. And, and then uh, finally, I um, just want to point out here an extraordinary truth that Jesus tells them that it is better that he go away so that the Holy Spirit would be sent. And I want to ask you to think with me about how extraordinary then the gift of the Holy Spirit really is. Because I think most of us, if we were given a choice, you could be physically, you could be present physically with Jesus. Like have the physical Jesus, the embodied, incarnate Son of God right there with you. Or you can have the Holy Spirit. I think many of us would say, well, um, I'm going to go with the, 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 the incarnate Christ with me, right? But what Jesus is saying here is essentially that, that what, what he, when, when he walked this earth, he could only be present with a set group of people in one time and place, but, but by the Spirit now, Jesus would be present in the hearts of all believers all at one time that there would be an inner reality of the presence of Christ that would encourage us, that would lead us, that he, he, would, he would live in us, dwell in us, and we in him. And so, yes, he says it's actually it's better because we would know his power and his presence in us by the person and work of the Holy Spirit, third person of the Trinity of God Almighty. And so we give thanks to God today that that we are not left alone, that we are given an advocate, the spirit of truth, who reminds us of what is true, who speaks the, the voice of Jesus into our hearts, leads us, guides us, empowers us, comforts us. Thanks be to God for this most precious gift of his spirit, the spirit's power and presence in our lives and in our church. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. And friends, until we have a chance to, to speak again, I pray that God would bless you and that he would keep you.